Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is in our Great Engine opening series. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and um, I've been carrying on investigating the Piets, pronouncing it properly this time, um, together with Dragon. And I have to say that uh, Dragon keeps on coming out with um, some very, very interesting things. And uh, this is no exception. In the Austrian attack, one of the most aggressive lines against the Piets, uh, Dragon comes up with a move that is virtually unknown uh, and actually makes a lot of sense and is very, very strong. So let's have a look at uh, how this goes. So it's uh, e4, d6, d4, knight f6, knight c3, g6, f4, bishop g7, and now the very interesting move. It's Dragon's third choice in its uh, PV, but uh, yeah, it assesses it quite, um, quite nicely. Queen to d2. Now, um, I'll just let that one uh, sink in uh, for you and explain uh, just what's going to happen with the next couple of videos. So what I'm going to do in this video is to explain, well, the point of the move and then the most natural human reactions to it. And uh, the associate, associated PGNs will, um, uh, will have uh, these lines that I present in the video. And there'll be um, another little PGN uh, that also um, uh, looks at these lines and then also puts lots of engine games that I've played in these lines uh, together with that. And then the next video, um, I'm going to um, look at the best engine uh, response to it and do the same with those PGNs and then also offer one more PGN, which has got all of the games that I've played in every single line with um, uh, with my engines. And uh, well, the, the goal of this is to try and um, uh, I'm trying to do it for my own openings to split things out between, um, you know, what's a natural human reaction and what would be an engine reaction uh, just to try and uh, for myself, you know, to uh, to keep that sort of uh, feeling and overview about uh, yeah what could I expect to see in a game. And, uh, you know, what could I expect to see if it's well known uh, to people and uh, they've been using an engine? And I think it's uh, a very useful uh, way to uh, to approach things. And there's also going to be a couple of entries on my blog as well, just in case you prefer to have it, um, uh, uh, you know, on paper rather than uh, in a video format. So plenty of, uh, of information uh, being made available about this idea. So yeah, Queen D2, um, one game, uh, quite low rated game in uh, chess base and uh, just 78 games on the live chess database um, and only one game, I think, where uh, players were above live chess 2500 and it wasn't particularly well played. So, uh, you know, basically completely unknown. Um, what is the idea of this move? Well, the idea of this move is that um, one of Black's major um, uh, sources of counterplay is to play the move c5. And uh, I can best demonstrate this against the normal knight to f3. Uh, black plays uh, c5, d takes c5. And now black doesn't want to play d takes c5 because, uh, well, these queen exchanges are very, very poor for, uh, for black. Actually, the engines give it like uh, plus two or plus three winning. You know, it's that bad for black. But black um, relies on the counterplay move queen a5 and after c takes d6 then knight takes e4 and we've got all of this pressure um, on the c3 knight um, so after queen a5 white has to do something like bishop d3 and then black plays queen takes c5 just recapturing the pawn avoiding the exchange of queens little bonus that you're stopping white from castling immediately and this these types of positions are supposed to be you know quite all right for um for uh, for black you know completely playable for white but nothing too um nothing too terrible so um then i think you're going to get the idea that um you know after queen d2 What's the idea? Well, the idea, of course, is that after c5, d takes c5, yeah, black, in principle, you know, for, in terms of natural moves, has got nothing better than d takes c5, because queen a5, yeah, there's no pin anymore. This queen is blocking it. So we've just got c takes d6. Um, and, uh, yeah, if you go e takes d6, I go knight b5, you know, opening the line, attacking, and it, once the queens are exchanged, knight c7 is a threat as well. Total carnage in actual fact. So that is um, one of the main points of, um, of Queen D2. Simply to stop the move C5. But actually it's got a few more ideas. Um, let me just show you, um, for example, one, uh, one natural move, Knight C6. 
very often played in the um, in the perk. White's idea is to play the move e4 to e5. And in the normal lines, after d takes e5, um, white takes back with the f pawn on uh, on e5, because um, well you could imagine um, something like, for example, knight f3, knight c6, e5, d takes e5, d takes e5, queen takes d1 is a little bit disruptive. I mean, either you take with the king and you can't castle anymore, or you have to move the knight away. And um, um, yeah, I mean the knight's just a little passive there; it's going to have to come back. The amazing point with uh, with queen d2 is that in these sort of lines, um, after e5, d takes e5, we can simply play d takes e5. Because after queen d2, we go bishop takes d2, and we're, we're, we're beautifully developed. I mean, we're recapturing the queen with a developing move, preparing to castle queenside. And um, yeah, I mean, because this knight is uh, still on c3, it's ready to jump into d5 or to b5 to attack c7 or e7. So, um, yeah, I mean, actually, um, you know, queen d2 not only prevents this, um, uh, this counterplay from, um, uh, from black with c5, which is black's main way of doing it, it prevents it on this move and on the next, it also um, makes uh, one of white's main ideas, e5, even stronger, because white can just go for these queen exchanges, um, not fearing the exchange of queens, because with a queen on d2, it actually develops the white queen. Um, and it's that combination of preventing the opponent's play and enhancing your own that makes it so powerful. I mean, you know, there are other moves where you could say, well, you know, uh, um, that's going to stop this c5 idea. Um, um, I mean, king e2 could be, uh, could be played, you know, you're getting out of this pin or king f2, um, you know, sort of bomb clouded somehow. But um, yeah, I mean, that doesn't, doesn't really have any other point somehow. Queen d2 has a lot of point. Um, so, I mean, I, I'm really, uh, as I said, I'm really, really impressed with this idea. Um, so let's have a look at what the human reactions would be. How would a human player uh, react to this um, if he was confronted with it for the first time? Um, and, uh, well, to do this, I've just interrogated myself, right? And, uh, and just said, yeah, what would I do? So c5 would definitely be the first thing we'd look at, but we've looked at that already. dc5, dc5. Queen takes d8, king d8, e5 is horrific for um, for uh, for uh, for black, and uh, yeah, as I said in the second PGN that I'll uh, that I'll share, um, you know I've got engine games from these positions as well. You know here I'm just showing you the uh, the basic lines, just giving you enough basically so that you could uh, just by watching this video you could just go off and play it. Um, another very typical idea. Well, we've seen this uh, if you've watched previous videos uh, that I've done on the pits. Um, you you will uh, know that c6 is a pretty automatic move. <laughs> so um, knight to f3, and then um, um, I could think of um, of several little things that uh, that black might do. Um, queen b6 is um, uh, is one idea often seen in the uh, in the pits. Um, attacking uh, also the modern as well. You know, sort of eyeing d4, also eyeing um, b2 couple of ideas here um you're also thinking about bishop g4 here from black you know attacking the knight on f3 weakening the pawn on d4 so leela very much like the move h3 stopping bishop g4 just intending to develop with queen f2 and uh, and bishop d3 um and that's very nice indeed and uh, i think it's worth mentioning that you know the queen looks very awkward on d2 covering this um uh stopping this bishop on c1 from developing but well we're going to see the engines have got some creative ways of dealing with that and actually moving the queen to f2 um okay you've taken two moves to reach this square but it's quite a good attacking square you know it's on the f file and after all it's behind your uh, your advanced f pawn the queen can also uh, come out to h4 so it's not stupid at all to have it there. And, uh, well, another idea that uh, Stockfish was very keen on, playing it in all sorts of lines, so do look out for it yourself. Stockfish liked the move bishop b2, bishop g4, and then simply b3, with bishop b2 and castle queenside to follow. Very, very nice. Reminds me a little bit of the uh, of a, a Carlson idea in the, uh, in the Sicilian. Um, if, you, uh, um, if you play that as white, you probably uh, know what I mean. It's... Um, just um, uh, putting the bishop on, on b2 there. And uh, again, this is, you know, very, very nice for white, really. Um, yeah, if you go bishop g4, um, yeah, Leela just wanted to play queen f2 again. And you just go bishop e3 and bishop d3 and castles. And yeah, lovely attacking position, no problems. Now, the interesting thing is, what if you play b5? 
natural reaction and just uh, looking for um, uh, for quick counterplay with b4 and looking to uh, you know looking to sort of say well the queen on d2 is awkward uh, what I really like about this one is that you play e5 and then black ha says haha I play b4 the idea being that after ef we're exploiting the position of the queen on d2 because we're threatening c takes d2 check now, always very important, uh, this. Now, it, this uh, idea occurs in a number of uh, Piet's lines and modern lines as well. I've had it in one game, actually. Uh, um, but actually, here, the engines, what, what I really like is the engines just think that this is really strong for white. So the queen on d2 here, um, you know, just um, uh, being used here to free a good square on uh, d1 for the knight, not blocking the light square bishop. And even more hilariously, the queen's actually attacking the pawn on b4. So if you do something like knight e4, um, I just go queen takes b4. And uh, yeah, sometimes you sack these pawns and it's good, but uh, here the engines are not at all impressed. They just think that white's just uh, a pawn up and more. So black has to go knight d5, and then we play the move a3. And uh, if you take, I just take on here, and then I'm just going to play c4 and uh, get rid of this knight. I could even play c4 immediately as, uh, as a pawn sack if I want. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's uh, um, it's just a very nice position indeed for uh, for white. So that very natural reaction, very natural human reaction. Um, I think once you've cottoned on to c5 doesn't work, you'll look at that sort of stuff. Yeah, doesn't really work. Um, a6 is quite similar. Um, we go knight f3 again. B5, we go E5, and B4, we go Knight D1. Again, exactly the same idea. Um, knight C6 is possible. Um, I think you'd normally expect to see it after castling because that's um, how the uh, the normal um, white line, uh, black line, normally goes: castles, uh, Bishop D3, Knight C6. So I, I'd expect if black was going to play uh, Knight C6, I'd kind of expect it after um, um, after castles uh, first of all. But I mean, it, it could be something very provocative, you know, hoping for um, for D5. And white must never get into that. That's not the knight you need to disrupt. I mean, here the knight just goes back. Quite a typical Piet's idea. Reminds me very much of what uh, good old Fred Yates in the 1920s and 30s uh, did against the king's uh, Indian. He was always playing knight c6, trying to force d5, and then undermining it afterwards. Uh, by the way... Um, um, I mentioned that because, uh, well, in my latest book, Reengineering the Chess Classics, I wrote together with Steve Giddens. Um, there's an absolutely amazing game that um, that uh, I I knew and uh, Steve didn't know, and uh, that's quite uh, surprising because he's uh, very very much into uh, classic games. But it was uh, uh, Irva against uh, Yates, a sameish King's Indian from the 1920s. That's way ahead of its time. You would have thought it was played in the uh, in the glory days of the King's Indian in the 1960s, 1970s. So amazing so yeah if you're interested do take a look at that but um, um, after knight c6 we play e5 that's what we do um, obviously d5 d5 that's what I pointed out before followed by castles just uh, excellent for white and um, after knight d7 we go knight f3 castles and this transposes to uh, the line castles knight f3 knight c6 so we'll have a look at it uh, there uh, but I think uh, knight c6 unlikely. The only other move I could think of was knight bd7. Um, Moskalenko mentions uh, knight bd7 ideas a lot in his Pitts book. Again, I think it's unlikely before castling because it, it feels a bit awkward after after e5. Um, White's general idea always is just to uh, to chase the knight away, expand like this, just to keep it pinned to the corner. And something like c5, we just take, take, and then we've got this nice move, queen f2. Hitting the knight on c5, you can't go de because it's uh, en prise. And uh, after castles, we're going knight e2, and then we're going bishop e3, bishop g2. And uh, either castling queen side or castling king side. Very nice position for white. The engines uh, think this is a clear advantage for, uh, for white. <laughs> They're still managing to make draws as black, but uh, yeah still all right. I do apologise for sniffling, got a rather heavy cold at the moment. Everyone around me a little bit ill. So castles is the best move and then we go knight f3. And uh, the nice thing here is that c5, we've still got our dc5. Queen a5 is still useless, the pin is still broken and dc5. e5 takes takes is still beautiful. Again the power of queen d2 and I think the engines consider this to be plus three or plus four. You know, really quite uh, quite incredible, really. Now, there's quite a few moves here that black could try. Um, knight a6 is another idea. 
um, often played uh, in the normal main lines, looking for, for c5 normally. Um, and here we play e5 again. You know, again, d, e, we, we play d, e, not at all afraid of that. And if knight d7, then h4 is uh, pretty scary. Um, this was uh, an idea that Dragon found in its uh, own analysis. So uh, h5 takes, and then this lovely idea, knight b5. You don't distract uh, your queen, bring it into here at all. You go knight b5. Um, just uh, we can uh, take this pawn later. Um, and if d, we take on g6, hg. Uh, you're not going to go fg, by the way, because of bishop c4 check and knight g5. Very, very dangerous. And after hg we go f takes e5 and uh, our idea is just to move the queen uh, g5 to h4 this queen's really powerful uh, on uh, on d2 in this position we've also got stuff like queen takes d4 and queen h4 as well of course all sorts of paths to the um uh, to the king side there it's very very dangerous indeed um next uh, human idea b6 um Played a lot, in actual fact, b6 in uh, this line, knight f3, castles, bishop e3, that I played as white uh, a little bit back in the day. And uh, b6 was quite a common response there. It's um, recommended by Moskalenko as the best reply in uh, in this line. Uh, b6 um, um, supports uh, bishop b7 and also um, uh, supports c5. You know, so it's a pretty uh, sensible move. So queen d2... Um, b6 is uh, um, is quite natural but um, yeah I mean we've got e5 knight fd7 again and h4 and this is really really strong um, yeah you know um, uh, the key point about uh, about this is that um, uh, you know this would be way better if this b pawn was back on um, on uh, um, on b7 um, because um, we've got loads of ideas where white's queen goes to d5 and just wins the rook on a8 and in the meantime uh, h5 is coming in and uh, well this queen is quite well placed to get over quickly to the king side so um, uh, this is really really dangerous you know this is not at all what you want to do and uh, yeah I've got quite a few uh, engine games in the, in the PGN with other, other possibilities knight g4 knight e8 but knight ft7 is the most natural human move but this is really really dangerous so bishop g4 is um, is uh, is also possible you know as soon as the knight comes to f3 you hit the uh, the knight um, got a couple of possibilities bishop e2 followed by h3 was what dragon uh, liked uh, queen f2 i think this was what leela liked with the idea of going bishop f3 gf3 pretty interesting as well you know i mean you're going to have h4 h5 f5 and just try and uh, break open the king side also very very dangerous there back to c6 um, we just go bishop d3 now and uh, the nice point about it is is that if you go bishop g4 now um, we are ready to go knight g5 just skipping away from the attack uh, again making use of the fact that the queen's on d2 and not pinned at all and after h6 we go h3 um, you don't want to open up the uh, h-file so you'll have to go back and then we go back to f3 you know, and uh, after knight g5 as well by the way black's got to be a little bit careful because white's also threatening the move f5 here just trapping the bishop on g4 so that's not uh, super um a6 we're again just going to go for e5 and h4 here and this is again pretty scary for uh, for black um knight bd7 that's uh, just a little bit more subtle than playing it on move five because um, you've committed the white knight to f3 and you've got the, the black king castled. Um, but again, you know, e5, we're just going to do something very similar here. g4, c5, d takes c5. Um, yeah, analyze d takes c5 in the PGN. It's not very, very, very good. I mean, we just take back on e5 and this knight's uh, uh, under fire. So knight c5 and bishop g2. And again, you know, this is pretty pleasant for uh, for white. Your castle king side, move the queen out of the way, bishop e3, rook d1, uh, nice space advantage. Knight, uh, you know, um, sort of uh, uh, offside here. You know, the engines managed to draw this as black, but um, it's not very pleasant at all. Um, d5, funnily enough, was one of my ideas because, uh, you know, I was, I was not very convinced that e5 really worked. Uh, c5 didn't look very good. So I thought, well, you know, you've got another one, haven't you? D5. And it, it feels like you're sort of exploiting, uh, uh, you know, the fact that the queen's on D2 here. But actually, um, uh, the engines hated this for black. 
<laughs> so Stockfish just wants to play queen e3 um, and just get out of the way like that and then go bishop d3 and he just forced this knight out of, uh, out of e4. Just um, was winning a lot of games here. Leela um, actually uh, just wanted to take some knight g5 and uh, um, yeah, I mean, uh, actually Leela beat Stockfish from this position uh, quite uh, very convincingly actually. And uh, it's not the favourite of uh, Stockfish and Dragon, but um, well, if Leela beats uh, Stockfish on my hardware, uh, then uh, it's pretty serious. And the, the idea is that you meet to Bishop f5 with h3, and after h5 you just go rook g1, trying to get in g4. And h4, queen f2 uh, was the uh, Leela Stockfish game. And, uh, yeah, I mean, this is just, uh, you know, Stockfish, uh, if even Stockfish can't hold it, you know, uh, then, you know, it, it's it's really um, very, very unpleasant indeed. I just, uh, you can't recommend this for uh, for Black. So, yeah, it's not a typical human idea, but I thought of it uh, just, uh, you know, um, as I was getting a bit more desperate about what on earth should I do then in, uh, in this position. So, yeah, you know, it's... Uh, you could come across it, and then e5. Finally, I, I definitely take a look at a, a move like this just to uh, to see whether it works. There's a few uh, lines in uh, Moskalenko's book where a surprising e5 works, but here we just take we take off the queens and we go fe. And uh, you know, there's a we've lost a tempo with queen d2 takes d8, but it doesn't matter because uh, this is just so strong. We're just going uh, following up with knight d5 next, and uh, yeah, black's just got problems everywhere. So, I mean, that's a very noticeable thing, actually, that this lost tempo with, uh, with queen d2, you know, obviously it's helping with these uh, e5, d takes e5, d takes e5 ideas. But in a lot of variations, you know, you, you're going to an ending, for example, it's still super for, for, um, for, uh, for white, despite having a tempo less compared to other lines. So that's another very powerful thing. I mean, what I thought um, maybe was the main line, you know, for me, basically, was knight c6. And after e5, then not d takes e5, because obviously d takes e5 is quite nice. But uh, knight d7, you know, that was what I thought would be the main line. And uh, actually, white's got a couple of good alternatives. If you just want to have a quiet life, queen f2, knight b6, bishop e3 is uh, very solid, quite nice. And, uh, you know, you've got all sorts of, uh, of ideas uh, there, you know, all sorts of ways of developing quite a few engine games in that line. I mean, you know, Leela and Stockfish managed to, uh, and Komodo Dragon managed to bring it, uh, you know, somewhere to, uh, to equality after about 25, 30 moves. But, you know, it is quite nice. Um, what I just wanted to show you was this line, um, simply because, uh, yeah, you know, um, if you've shocked your opponent with queen d2, uh, you've got to judge it during the game. But I, I often feel, you know, that uh, I would like to keep on shocking, basically, you know. And uh, um, and you know, this is really, you know, this is getting very, very dangerous. Uh, it's um, uh, So d takes c5. Um, I mean, f takes c5 look dangerous to me. The engines uh, don't uh, think it's amazing. You can see the games that they play. But again, you know, one part of it is kind of shocking your um, your uh, your opponent somehow. But uh, after DE, knight B6, important move uh, always in, the, in these lines of the perk. Uh, stop the bishop from coming to C4. We go H5 and then knight B4. And this was um, um, a Leela uh, line, but also Komodo Dragon came up with it after letting it analyze for a very long time. Um, so you're threatening c2. So what what uh, the engines wanted to do was play this move queen e2, and after bishop f5, simply sidestep with uh, king f2. It's quite uh, quite unusual. Again, you know, if you uh, if you're thinking, ooh, uh, you know, uh, this all feels a little bit too weird. I'm I'm not sure about it. Then yeah, don't worry. I mean, uh, you know, queen f2 and bishop b3 beforehand was uh, was pretty good. I just wanted to show you the line because it was. Uh, just found it really interesting. Uh, the idea is not to attack, but just to shut in this uh, dark squared bishop behind these pawns, and then play bishop e3, queen d2 takes takes. Uh, sorry, queen d1. Uh, that's uh, how they were doing it. Takes takes, and just play this position for compensation. And uh, well, you'll see a Leela game that was played in uh, in this. Very very interesting. Doing everything to keep this bishop on h8 totally out of play, and uh, basically just play with a piece up. Really interesting line, but as I said, if that's not your uh, your cup of tea, then uh, you know Queen F2, Knight B6, Bishop B3, really solid, and just take a look at the games uh, in the PGN. So there we are. That is five Queen D2, totally unknown. Really pretty strong idea, you know. Uh, good evaluation. It's not just uh, something stupid. It's it's something really really good. 
Um, yeah, total surprise, total shock for your opponents. Um, these are the human lines, lines that I consider uh, to be lines that a human player, when faced with it, would you know would possibly come up with. Now, you know, obviously, I've done my best to brainstorm and think of as many things as possible, but these are all typical perk move, perk pits moves. Sorry, pits moves. Um, uh, you know that a, that a, a, a you know an experienced pits player might uh, might come up with. Um, and uh, yeah, as I said, you know the information I'm going to give you, uh, the PGNs, uh, all structured around this. So um, just um, these uh, uh, lines that are just in this video, just to give you that quick overview, and then these lines, you know, filled with um, loads and loads of engine games, just to give you extra detail if you like, if you wanted in particular lines. So that's that. Um, the next video um, will um, look at the best engine recommendation against this line. And uh, actually, it's just as amazing. Uh, a human player would never have a single chance of ever coming up with it. And, uh, you know, I, uh, um, I'm all for, um, uh, you know, for uh, uh, telling people don't underestimate human grandmasters. You know, um, we, um, you know, we make tactical mistakes, but we're really, really good as well. We see a lot of things. But this is something you just wouldn't see. So, uh, yeah, you know, uh, that's why I think also this idea is a shock weapon against a player who doesn't know it. It's got a huge potential, you know. So, uh, yeah, do uh, do take a look at that. But otherwise, you know, thanks very much for watching. Hope you're enjoying it. Do give a like, subscribe, tell your friends. Um, thanks very much to the uh, to the uh, to the viewer who um, uh, did a lovely thread on uh, on Reddit. It's led to a lot of extra subscriptions, a lot of extra comments. So you know, thanks very much indeed. Um, it's uh, I mean, I, I enjoy doing it. You know, I'm not doing it for fame or glory or uh, or uh, vast amounts of money. Uh, all this stuff I do. Uh, but it's uh, you know it's lovely as well when uh, you see that you know people really appreciate it, people really uh, enjoy it as well. No, it gives you a good, uh, a, a lovely little boost. So thanks very much indeed for uh, for that. And otherwise, you know, thanks very much for watching, and hope to see you at the next video. I think if you watch this one, you've got to see the next one. Thanks very much.